Equities are a good place to be when inflation comes back because it gives corporations pricing power. And indeed, when you go back in history and look at what happens when inflation rears its ugly head, equities tend to do quite well. But the way, the sectors that I am fully weighted in right now, there are two. You know, all these discussions about all the technological platforms that allowed us to survive and go digital, I've watched these technologies turn America into America 2.0, a digital economy where there's a tremendous improvement in productivity. My allocation starting last January went from 50-50 in fixed income to equities to 70% equities because my feeling is we will see inflation at some point in Q4. And the reason I feel that is we're stimulating the economy in so many different ways at the consumer level, now discussions about infrastructure, all of these PPP programs, it's just money flying out of a helicopter into the economy in an unprecedented way. And yet I can measure the effect of that by just looking at the tear sheets of my 30 plus private companies I'm an investor in. I see their cash flows and their sales each week. The fact is though, the market has to be a very broad and wide vehicle because for some people investing means a millisecond and for others it means a decade and we need to accommodate all of them. The best thing we can do and continue to do and we're getting very good at it as a market, we are the envy of the world, the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ, is just to continue to shine transparency on positions. But the way, the sectors that I am fully weighted in right now, there are two, healthcare and technology. You know, all these discussions about all the technological platforms that allowed us to survive and go digital. I've watched these technologies turn America into America 2.0, a digital economy where there's a tremendous improvement in productivity. Reddit and Wall Street Bets was emerging as a powerhouse in communications amongst people that wanted to trade trading ideas and stock ideas. They merged together they cause an explosion, atomic in size. And now, who's the new sophisticated investor? Yeah, I'm feeling very bullish about anything with a strong balance sheet, assuming we're going to get some more volatility. You gotta remember, Scotty, we have taken the COVID count off the news agenda for this cycle. We just put a curfew on at 10 o'clock. That means I cannot rent a, run a second shift in a commercial bakery. I have to shut down my restaurant at nine o'clock to allow the employees to get home by 10. This is going to have an impact on the economy and which is why it's important that we start talking about stimulus right out of the gate here. I like a Pfizer balance sheet. I like a Pfizer theme. I like healthcare going into the volatility that we undoubtedly will have for Q1 and Q2 on COVID. Take Nike, for example, a great global example. In five months, they achieved something they said was going to take six years. They went 50% direct to consumer all around the world. When you sell a product or service direct to consumer, you only have two costs, customer acquisition cost and manufacturing and delivery logistics. So your margins can be as high as 93% on some products versus going through the old traditional retail, which has fallen out of favor. So you've got all of these um, digitization platforms that have allowed direct to consumer, and those are not work from home stocks, they're work from anywhere stocks. The Zooms, the DocuSignings, the CrowdStrikes, the Shopify, Adobe, all of these platforms that continue to show 20 to 40% growth year over year, that for me, that's a 20% weighting, even though they're volatile you're not gonna find growth like that anywhere else in the economy. I got a year's worth of return in two trading sessions. Um, you know, the big names, the Pfizer, the Merckx, the J&J, &J, et cetera, uh, have put that sector for me in terms of my holdings across our, our mandates at over 20%, 22%, ahead of tech now. So at extraordinary returns uh, with the, you know, overall tone being that these companies are not gonna be regulated out of existence under a new Biden light scenario. And if Trump gets back in, we've still got to deal with the pandemic. So they're going to be in the limelight and continue to bring therapeutics and, their, and, and vaccines back. But it, it tells you that the repatriation of market capitalization away from other jurisdictions, other geographies where the therapeutics were made and other drugs were made are all coming back to Puerto Rico, stateside Canada, Mexico. This is going to be a trend that lasts for years. It's a fantastic sector. Fantastic balance sheets, wonderful cash flow, and now uh, a release against any abuse of regulation on them. So I think this is a, a fantastic place to be. 
Equities are a good place to be when inflation comes back because it gives corporations pricing power. And indeed, when you go back in history and look at what happens when inflation rears its ugly head, equities tend to do quite well, as long as it's not hyperinflation. And we're certainly not Venezuela here in the US yet. When I take a company public and I see a short position build, that's just delayed buying. I'm okay with it. And you have to be able to hedge your position. You might, you know, short Schlumberger and go long Chevron. There's all kinds of strategies with shorting. The, the fact is that nobody saw this coming. Nobody saw two things emerging. They were on parallel paths and then all of a sudden they merged. I have diversified recently and put a 20% weighting in my equity into Europe. Everybody hates the European zip code, but I own equities in Swiss francs, British pounds, euros. There's 50 companies there that are well known in the domestic markets. Nestle, Roche, American Tobacco, fantastic balance sheets, strong power to increase prices during inflationary times, stellar uh, distributions in terms of profits almost a 3% dividend in some cases. I mean, you know, why not own those at a time when even the European regulators are remaining very, very accommodative. And so my view is, yes, you can't for you. The, the trouble is when people say, I'm, I'm gonna take assets out of the market, they're trying to time the market. And if you had tried to do that over the last 18 months, there were days in our own domestic market where we had between seven and 11% swings intraday. And if you weren't in the market for those hours, you missed 50% of the return of the year. Decide if you're going to asset allocate, for example, 3% to Bitcoin, or you want to go to cash because you're concerned, but you will make no return on cash. In fact, you'll have a negative return. Right. I, I, I have a rule that I do not let a stock become more than 5% weighting of the portfolio, and I never let a sector become more than 20%. I've used that for decades for diversification. It's a discipline. It works for me because it really helps protect you against drawdowns and volatility. And one other thing to talk about here, this gives you a reason why you cannot time sectoral rotations. If you like healthcare, you got to be in it for those two trading days where you get one year of return in 48 <laughs> hours. Yeah. Otherwise, you'd never enjoy these benefits. You got to stay long. And then finally, my theory on healthcare is look at the technology, the advancements that Moderna and Pfizer did and others that you know in 11 months brought out a vaccine with new technology, but there's also a, mo a momentum within governments, particularly the US government, to repatriate all aspects of healthcare. That means being, bringing back generic drugs to Puerto Rico, to Canada, to stateside, to Mexico, so that they're very close to the population and we don't get stuck where we don't have medical devices or PPP materials in the next pandemic, because I don't know when COVID-20 is coming or where it's coming from, but I know it's going to come eventually, and we have to be set up for that. So the billions of dollars that will be invested in healthcare is a very good theme. So my overweighted or fully weighted is, is technology and it's, it's healthcare. And, I've, and I've, I've pulled back my horns from energy. Hydrocarbons are falling out of favor with institutional investors. Right. You've seen that happen. And I think they will trade off and, and underperform ind indexes for the next few years. We are in an unprecedented growth phase right now. You know, this, this is like the 50s, the 1950s, the late 1950s, early into the 60s. We're going to have six, seven, eight, nine percent GDP growth in Q4. And so I think the equity numbers that people put out, the analysts keep up, you know, keep upgrading their, their, their earnings estimates on companies and the companies print and they beat those up estimates. And it's going to continue to keep happening, which is why the markets remain relatively buoyant. Yeah, there's some volatility in tech because there's concern about interest rates, but the growth rates of the underlying tech companies remain very, very strong quarter after quarter. So I think this is just the, the you know, the, the classic garden variety correction and, and what is pause that refreshes. I'm very optimistic and constructive for equities. The sectors that I am fully weighted in right now, there are two healthcare and technology. You know, all these discussions about all the technological platforms that allowed us to survive and go digital. I've watched these technologies turn America into America 2.0, a digital economy where there's a tremendous improvement in productivity. Equities are a good place to be when inflation comes back because it gives corporations pricing power. And indeed, when you go back in history and look at what happens when inflation rears its ugly head, equities tend to do quite well, as long as it's not hyperinflation. And we're certainly not Venezuela here in the US yet.
I, I, I have a rule that I do not let a stock become more than 5% weighting of the portfolio, and I never let a sector become more than 20%. I've used that for decades for diversification. It's a discipline. It works for me because it really helps protect you against drawdowns and volatility. You cannot time sector rotations. If you like healthcare, you got to be in it for those two trading days where you get one year of return in 48 hours. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, you'd never enjoy these benefits. You got to stay long.